Okay, welcome back to the Tenon Cutter build. Uh, last time we did a lot of the modifications on the cross slide and the table. Uh, one thing that I forgot is this uh, these modifications to the lead screws. Uh, when I got my cross slide, it, uh, it didn't have handles on it. And so I ordered these nice handles off McMaster and basically just had to mill down a new uh, shoulder and then cut a keyway for the uh, handles to lock into. So that's what I'm doing right there. All right, on to one of the most important parts of this whole build, the shaft that connects the drive pulley to the blade. Uh, this is a critical part, and it was definitely one of the most fun to make in the whole project because it was a challenge, and also I got to do some single-point threading, and there's just something about super fine threads that uh, are very satisfying because uh, many of the threads in screws and and inexpensively made items are rolled on with a die uh, and so there's there has to be some looseness uh, but when you cut them by hand you can have them fit so nice that the the nut just slides perfectly so anyway enough about my thread enthusiasm uh, I started by milling down the one side to the uh, the thread outer diameter then switched over to a chamfer tool to chamfer the end of the shaft and then moved to a parting tool to cut a little relief shoulder where the threads will end and I wanted to make sure I test fit it to hold the little blade supports and moved on to the single point threading tool where I just slowly took off material until it was just a perfect fit. Once the fit on the threads was just awesome, I did a little more chamfering on the end and then used a, a triangular stone to really clean off those threads and then moved the whole shaft out of the collet and supported it in the tailstock while I used the DRO to figure out the exact length to the other end of the shoulder and then used a cutoff tool to basically mark that shoulder. I didn't want to do a full parting operation because there was so much sticking out and it was fairly hard material. Uh, so I brought the parting tool in fairly, you know, a little bit and then uh, cut the rest off on a bandsaw and when I flipped the shaft, I began by facing it down to that dimension that I had established. The other side of the shaft was uh, a lot less nerve wracking because I didn't have to worry about ruining threads. It was just taking uh, the shoulder down to the inner diameter of the pulley. As well as tapping a hole for a retaining screw on the end. Then it was over to the mill to put a keyway in the one end of the shaft, which uh, went pretty easily with this little carbide mill. Uh, and then I switched up the setup to mill the flats for the, uh, the wrench so that I could tighten this shaft. Now this was a crazy setup, so it was easy to move the first flat, um, but then how do you make a second flat opposite of it? So what I basically did was uh, use a, a parallel to get it pretty close and then a dial indicator to, uh, to go back and forth on the existing flat until there was no movement in the dial indicator. Now, the right way to do this is with a square collet block, but at the machine shop I was using, there were no square collet blocks or collets to to fit them, which obviously there wouldn't be collets. Uh, but it worked out regardless, and the flats fit just fine. There were a couple other tiny parts that I, I did not film machining. They're not super interesting. Two little plastic blocks that are the gauge uh, lines for the adjustable measurements and uh, the 
the block that holds the depth rod, uh, which you can see in this picture of the finished parts. All right, now we are really shifting gears because it is time to build the frame. Now, back in my day, I was taught that when you build a tube frame, you rough cut all your parts, and then you mill them to exact length on a bridge port. And this was in the uh, RIT Formula SAE team where we were building these race cars and using the mill to get very precise tube cuts. Um, but <laughs> actually, the real situation is that there wasn't a very accurate tool to get accurate lengths. We had a, an old bandsaw, and the grinding uh, chop saw is terrible for this. Uh, like a cold saw would be ideal. Um, anyway, long story short, I cut all the pieces rough length on the bandsaw, cleaned them up a little bit, and then moved to the mill where I used an end mill to square up one end and then used a variety of uh, fixtures and setups to get an exact length on all the tubes by moving them over in the vise and then milling the other end. So this is often accomplished by either two sets of stops made out of clamp uh, accessories and then using precision like one two three blocks to move uh, an ex a known dimension over uh, three or six inches or whatever to make another setup um, and once I knew where the the tube was in the vise I could drill the mounting holes for some of the bearings and the cross slide and stuff like that at a precise location I really wanted to limit as much post welding fabrication as possible uh, I didn't want to do strange layouts or mount things uh, by just drilling holes in the in the finished frame so uh, by drilling the holes in the in the tubes and then using fixturing to line them up when I welded it I was gonna ensure that the parts that I wanted to be in a certain place were in a certain place all right time to weld so once the tubes were all finished machining, I, I really took a long time to clean them up. These were, these were inexpensive, nearly free tubes, so they were pretty rusty. And uh, I got as much rust off as possible. I ground down all the ends. I washed it with acetone. I really tried to prepare for nice welds. Uh, and then it was just a, a matter of working through the subcomponents of the frame, uh, using fixture blocks and clamps to make sure everything was squared up, tapping them in place, uh, welding the tubes, then tacking and fixturing the frame subcomponents in place, tacking that, welding that, and then I would work around the frame, making any adjustments necessary to make sure everything was square, and also putting beads in all the... Uh, other places that needed them so we had full full weld around all the different tubes um, and some of the exposed tube ends were going to have these little plastic inserts put into them and then the feet were going to have adjustable leveling feet um, but everything worked out quite well and and the whole frame was was pretty square despite you know all the heat and the tacks that that were in uh, a much more secure jigging um, method would have probably been better you know like a full proper welding table but it, it all worked out the frame received the same paint treatment as all the other parts uh, a couple coats of etching primer then uh, a hammered gray finish which really made it look quite nice so that's enough for this video uh, and the next in the next one we're gonna we're gonna put this all together and actually make some cuts so thanks for watching and sticking with this yeah i'll see you next time thanks everybody for watching if you found this content helpful please consider supporting never stop building the easiest way to do that is to simply hit that red subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of new videos and content that i release if you really want to be my best buddy 
become a Patreon subscriber where you can get plans to all these projects, uh, exclusive content, and much more. So check the description below for a link to that. And as always, never stop building.